Okay, folks, today I'm going to show you how to do case study number one, the dude. Now, I'm not going to do everything for you, of course. This part here, the executive summary of your findings, that's going to be your responsibility, right? But I'm going to walk you through it a little bit. Let me tell you something that I am looking for. See where it says two of the most key variables are the gender and marital status? We call those the demographics, right? The demographics, and that's what I'm looking for here. I want to know about the age. I want to know about the marital status, the gender of our customers. Who are they? That's what I'm looking for. I'm going to show you how to do the distribution of that and then put that into a column or pie chart so that I'll know how our customers are buying. Is it using their Amex card? Is it using the coupon? So on and so forth. Then I'm going to show you how to do the cross tabulation and the scatter diagram. So two, three, four, and five I'm going to work through with you and then you're going to produce a one-page executive summary on your own. Fair enough? Okay, now, what I'm going to ask you to do is just go ahead and open up a new Word document here, right? And the very first thing we'll do is start a cover page for that, all right? So we're going to go to Insert, Cover Page, and I don't care which one you pick. Any one of them is fine. Let's pick the simplest one right here. Make it easy, right? And then for the document title, it will be The Dude. Simple as that, okay? You can put case study one here if you want your name and so on and so forth should fill in put Lynn University and move on with your life okay here you're going to put the executive summary and it's going to be one page no more than one page double space all right get in the practice of writing executive summaries so that your boss or your boss's boss or even you when you become the boss will be able to analyze the data very quickly we're then going to insert a page break and we're going to put an appendix here this is where you're going to put your charts and graphs. Okay. Now, in APA format, any chart or graph is called a figure. So we're going to start out with figure one, right? And then figure two, figure three, so on and so forth. Make sense? Now, let me show you how to get those figures. Well, we're going to come over here to Excel, all right? And we're going to start out with our data. Start out with our data, okay? Let me delete all this and start over. Make sure we're all on the same page. Now you'll see across the top of your data, you have the type of customer, you have the number of items, you have the net sales, so on and so forth. Okay, you have everything you need right here to be able to get started with your uh, with your particular pivot table. The best way for you to analyze all that and tell me anything that you want to know about this data is to put it into what's called a pivot table. So we're going to highlight from B1 all the way across down to H104. So I'm going to highlight from B to H and then do Control Shift and Down Arrow to select all of the data. Again, that was Control Shift Down Arrow. All right. We insert Pivot Table. If you have a PC, over to the right is a section that says Pivot Table and Chart. It'll be over here in the charts. You should select that because with the PC, it actually makes it a much much easier process if you do that over here so for the Mac people we're over here over in the recommended charts there'll be a pivot table pivot chart put that in over there okay you'll notice that it's told me that I've selected B4 through H104 I'm gonna put that to a new worksheet here All right, we click OK now the first thing I do is I look down here and I'll see that I have an assignment and a sheet Two. I'm going to rename that sheet by right clicking, rename, and I'm going to call it pivot table. All right. That way I'll know which tab I'm looking for. You can go ahead and delete the practice one if you want, or you can play around with it either way. So back to the pivot table. We're going to click inside our pivot table fields over here. It says click in this area to work with the pivot table report. We're going to click there. And that pulls up my field names, right? The field names. Now, of all of these inf uh, pieces of information, we have type of customer, items, net sales, so on and so forth. The most important thing is the net sales. So I'm going to check that box. And when I do, it puts the sum of net sales in the bottom right-hand corner for me. And it also gives me my sum of net sales here at 21,360. I'm going to collect that number, an A4 click the dollar sign and now I'm going to reduce that five cents because when you're talking about twenty one thousand dollars nickels don't matter alright 
So we see now that we have a total of our net sales of 21,360. It quickly took the net sales and summed it up for me. In the pivot table, if you pull this down, you can get a count, you can get an average, you can get the maximum, minimum, so on and so forth. Let's say you want to know what the average sales per ticket were. It'll take that number, 21,360, and divide it by 100 and give you the number that you're looking for. Okay? It would give you $214 per customer. Now, I'm going to put that back to sum because that's what I really want to know. What's the total that I have? Okay, so we click OK. So we got a total sales of 21,360 by taking the sum of net sales. All right. So remember what I said, one of the key variables is the target demographic. Well, we need to know what the age of our customers are. But before we do that, an important variable in the age of our customers is what generation were they born into. Okay, so we have Gen X, excuse me, we have Baby Boomers, we have Gen X, and we have Millennials. These are the three big demographics that we have in the United States. Okay, Baby Boomers were generally born between 1945 and 1965. Now, demographers vary on what those age ranges actually are, but I'm going to use 45 to 65 because it was the end of the Second World War and right up until the middle of Vietnam. Generation X, we're looking at 1966 to 1985. This is the MTV generation. And then the Millennials, we're looking at 1986 to 2005. I don't know what they have in their mind, but anyway, moving right along. We are now in year 2017, so that means then we're looking for people who are between the ages of, excuse me, between the ages of 72 and 52 for this range, and then we'll simply autofill that down to get the other age ranges. Now, obviously we have no 12-year-olds in our list, so we're going to bump that up to 18 because that's the minimum age in which we can get a credit card. So what does that mean for us? Well, that means we're looking for age groups between 18 and 31, 32 to 51, 52 to 72. Putting all of that together, it's roughly about 20 years in each one. Well, how do we put all of that into our table, right? So, we come back over here to A4 to pull up our field names. We're going to scroll through the list here until we find age. Take the age and drag it to the column fields. Okay? It says, do you want to replace the contents? The answer is yes, because we don't need that information here anymore. As a matter of fact, I can go ahead and delete that. Okay? And you'll see that it tells me, my youngest person in the list was 18 years old. The oldest person was 76 years old. So we're going to group those now. All right. So we're going to right click and group. Right click and group. And then it'll ask us where do we want to start? Well, we want to start at 18. We're going to bump this one up to 78. And we're going to group by 20 years. Now we go up to 78 so that we have nice even round numbers in our in our math, okay? So we got 18 to 78 grouped by 20 and we click okay. Here, now you can see 18 to 37 Gen X, excuse me, millennials, 38 to 57 Gen X, 58 to 78 baby boomers, right? Let's go ahead and label those now and get that out of the way. So, we're going to call these the millennials. Right. This is the Gen Xers. This is Baby Boomers. Okay. And we have our grand total at 21,360. Before we even put in any charts, we can already see that the Generation X is the largest demographic. So it's Generation X that we're looking for. Okay. All right. Now we want to know, we have our age, we also want to know by gender. So we're going to take the gender. I'm going to drag it to the row labels. Take gender, drag it to the row labels. Okay. 
And if you have a PC, you'll see that you have a chart that's already started. Us Mac people, we have to build our own charts, right? As a matter of fact, if you take gender and marital status and drag it here, you get a cross tabulation of the entire thing. Now, I'm not going to draw a chart from that using the Mac because it kind of sort of gets in the way. Instead, I'm just going to draw a 2x2 two two or a 3x2 cross tabulation. Again, that's a 3x2 cross tabulation. So I have millennials, Gen X, and baby boomers across the row, across the columns, and I have female and male in the rows. I'm going to go from A4 all the way over to D6. I'm going to leave the grand totals out and just use this information. I'm going to insert recommended chart, and I have my stacked column, or I have my clustered column. Either one of those is fine with me. All right. Either one of them is fine, but I'm going to use the stacked column just so that we can see what our numbers look like. All right. Okay. Now we can take all of this information and we can pick a chart design. I don't care which of the chart designs you use as long as it is consistent. In other words, use the same one over and over. All right. But what I will do is go ahead and pick one that I know is going to have the data labels in it. So if I pick this one, that has the data labels already built in. This one has the data labels, so on and so forth, right? This one here, if you like that, uh, you know, the little darker look there, that's fine too. Don't pick one like this, however, because you see it has black writing on dark words and you can't really see that. All right, these are not appropriate. These in the first half are, so this one's a good one. I'll go ahead and pick that one, right? So this is chart style 2 or chart style 4. Either one is acceptable to me, all right? Now, we need to change the chart title. What we have is the net sales by gender and age. Net sales by gender and age. So we're going to change that in our chart title. Net sales, gender and age. All right. And already we see that our biggest uh, age group is Generation X. When we look inside the Generation X, we see that females outnumber males, women outnumber men. We're going to copy this, okay, copy, come over to our Word document, and for figure one, we're going to put net sales demographic, okay. Then we will right click and paste. And on the PC, it gives you the option of embedding or whatever when you do that. But on the Mac, you have to come down to that little clipboard. We want to make sure we embed the workbook. In other words, we want to make sure that it is inside our Word document and not linked to the data. If you keep it linked to the Excel data, when we go back and change our Excel workbook, then it's going to be a little bit of a problem because it will change the charts on your Word document. and You don't want it to do that. So we click Embed the Data. That way, it's a part of the data. So we have our net sales by gender and age. I'm going to make that a little bit smaller here because I'm going to need some room for the other charts. All right. So I want that to take up about half a page. You want about one chart, maybe two charts per page, no more than that. Okay. The next one, of course, is going to be figure two. All right. We don't know what that's going to be yet, so we'll leave that blank. We go back to our Excel document. Okay, so now we know net sales by gender and age. I'm going to take that one out. Don't worry, it's still there in our Word document. See? Okay. All right, now, the next thing, instead of net sales by gender and age, how about we do net sales by gender and marital status? So we take the gender, leave it in the rows, we leave the marital status in the columns. We highlight from A4 to C6 again. Now we have a two by two cross tabulation. We're going to insert that same recommended chart. All right. Again, we're keeping it consistent, so I'm going to pick chart style number two. And this time my chart title is going to be net sales by gender and marital status. Okay. 
Looking at this data, what do we see? We see that married outnumbers single, especially with the women. So what are we looking at? Married women. All right. So we're going to copy this. Come over to our Word document. We're going to right click and paste. Notice that it changes it to that same orange and blue theme. Stretch it out so that it looks the same. All right. And we're going to embed that data. Okay. So let me do that one more time. Okay. We copy it from here. So we right click and copy. Go to our Word document. We right click and paste. Come down to the clipboard and embed the workbook so that it's a part of the Word document, not part of the Excel document. And then we click and stretch it out so that it's the same width. Now, when we put these two together, what do we see? We see Generation X women and we see married women are the biggest demographic. That means that our target demographic is married Generation X women. We're going to go to our Word document at the top and we're going to say something like, as you can see in figures 1 and 2, our primary target demographic is married Gen X women. These account for, and you can either tell me the total of this number and that number, but that's going to not really give you anything. What the better way to do is to go back, take a look, and you can say these account for the majority of our sales, right? Much easier process. Then let someone else do the data, all right? So far, so good? <clears throat> all right. So now the next thing we need to do, this is the, um, we have the, gener the demographic and we have the distribution of the key variables already in there. The next thing we need is a column chart or pie chart showing the number of customers attributable to each of the methods of payment. Well, the method of payment is the type of card. So we're going to come back over here. We're going to click our table. Pulls up the pivot table builder again. We're going to get rid of this guy. We don't need him anymore. And again, just as to belabor the point a little bit, notice that even though I deleted the graph in the Excel document, because I embedded it into the Word document, it didn't disappear. Okay. Now, I know my next graph is going to take more than one page, so I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I'm on the next page and type figure 3. Okay. Get ready for putting in the new document. So I come back over here, leaving some of net sales. I'm going to take the gender out, take the marital status out. And instead, I'm going to take method of payment, and I'm going to pull it to the column fields. Now I have Amex, Discover, Dude Card. The Dude Card is a proprietary card given just to people who shop at the store. MasterCard and Visa, right? I also want to know whether or not my coupon works. So I'm going to take type of customer, I'm going to drag it to the rows. So I've got columns here, type of customer here, which gives me a 5 by 2 cross tabulation. Coupon versus no coupon, and then the type of payment here. Once more, I highlight from A4 to F6, insert, recommended chart. Either one of them is fine. Let's go ahead and pick the first one here, though. Okay and I'm going to pick my chart style 2. All right. Chart title is going to be net sales by payment type and or how about payment and customer type. All right. So now we see that the blue is those who use the coupons, the red are those who did not. When we look at the Amex card, we see that it accounted for very few of our sales to begin with, but even there, the number of people who used the coupon versus those who did not was almost double the sales. So, at $400 versus $200, we can clearly say that the coupon worked for our Amex customers. 
For Discover, however, they didn't even use the coupon at all. There are no sales using coupons for Discover Card. And that might be for some other reason or whatever, right? MasterCard, the coupon didn't work. And as a matter of fact, fewer people use their MasterCard and the coupon together than just use the MasterCard. Same thing for Visa. However, when we look at the dude card, the proprietary card, we see that the difference in sales is almost, is actually, yeah, almost $7,000 difference here, right? 11000 versus 4000 that's a $7,000 difference. That is a huge, huge difference here. So we're going to co uh, copy this, come over to our Word document, right click and paste, embed it again, right? Okay. And we have net sales by payment and customer type. Now, how would you write that up? Well, you'd say something like, when we look at the net sales by payment and customer type, in parentheses, put figure three, we can clearly see that those who were using the coupon in conjunction with or in, in addition to using the dude card um, were very successful. Uh, the Visa card, the MasterCard, not as much. The Discover card, not at all. And the Amex, it was successful with them as well. So all I really want to know there is, did the coupon work and what kind of card did they use? Write that up into a nice executive summary and you're good to go. Okay. Now, so we have done number two, the percent frequency distribution for the key variables. Number three, the column chart or pie chart showing the number of customer purchases attributable to each method of payment. That's this thing. Number four, the cross tabulation which is over here in the Excel spreadsheet, right? This is my cross tabulation. And the last thing we need to do is a scatter diagram to explore the relationship between net sales and customer age. Now we already know what our target demographic is. We know that Generation X is the generation or the age group that is buying the most of our products. What we want to know is if there's a linear relationship between their age and their net sales. To do that, we're going to put in a scatter plot. So let's go back to our Excel sheet. I'm going to go to the assignment tab here, and we see that we have all of our data. We want age here to be on the x axis, and we want net sales to be on the y axis. In order to do that, net sales needs to be to the right of age. So I'm going to highlight D4 all the way down to D104, D4 to D104. I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to paste it in I4. Now I have the age on the left, net sales on the right. And now I'm ready to do my scatter plot. So I'm going to highlight H4 through I104. Excuse me, H104 through I104. Computer's going a little crazy this morning, right? H4 through I104. We're going to go insert, scatter plot. Insert a scatter plot. Okay. Now, here we have net sales, we have age. We have net sales here, so we're going to say net sales by age. Net sales by age. And I want to take out those grid lines because they're going to get in my way. So how am I going to do that? Well, I'm just going to take and click the grid line, press the delete key. Click the grid line again and press the delete key. Now I have just the data plotted, right? Okay. All right. So couple of other things that I might want to do here is I'm going to go and add a chart element. If you have a PC, you should have a little bubble that pulls up here. If you don't, you just add a chart element. And we're going to go do our axis titles. I want a primary horizontal axis and a primary vertical axis. For the horizontal axis, I'm going to put age. For the vertical axis, I'm going to put net sales. Okay. All right, and it might take you a little bit to get that, but just go ahead and do what you got to do there. All right, so we've got age and net sales. Now, 
We can't really tell by the shape of the data whether there's a relationship. We don't see a clear trend upward or a clear trend downward or horizontal or anything. So what we have to do is insert a trend line. How we do that is by right clicking any of the dots, add a trend line, then we're going to display the equation and the R squared value on the chart. And you'll see that these numbers popped up. Now, you don't have to do this part, but if you choose to, it's fine. I'm going to go ahead and click the tab here so that I end up with a solid line that is red in color. All right, I want a red line there because I want to be able to see that. Okay. I'm also going to take this and pull it up a little bit so we can analyze this together. All right, so let me make that larger so you can see it on the screen. And away we go. Now, what does all of this mean for me? Okay. Well, you recall from your, uh, from your algebra class that you had the equation of a line, right? Remember, the equation of a line was given with the equation y equals mx plus b. Right? y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the intercept. Okay? And the slope gives the relationship. In this case, our slope has a negative sign in front of it, so that means over time we see a gradual downward shift. But if we take this number and we round it off to the nearest 100% or the nearest percent, that's actually only about 5 cents. In other words, as each of our customers gets one year older in age, they buy approximately 5 cents uh, less material or 5 cents less net sales. When we're talking about $20,000, $21,000 in sales, a nickel is not significant. But even more important is this number right here, the R squared number, right? Let me paint that red for you so you can see it better. That R squared number is called the coefficient of determination. Okay, the coefficient of determination. It's going to be a number between 0 and 1, where 0 indicates no relationship. Okay, and 1 indicates perfect relationship. Okay, so zero indicates no relationship, one indicates a perfect relationship. This number, if we rounded it off to the nearest uh, four decimal places, we would have zero. In other words, the, this is a number that tells me how well my data, the blue dots, fit the model the red line which is given by this equation. Okay, So what does all of that mean? It means that we have very little relationship here, almost a non-existent relationship. In other words, the data fit the model only 11 times out of 10,000 times. Only 11 out of 10,000 times here. So this is not a very reliable model, therefore we can say that there is no linear relationship between age and net sales. Let me say that one more time and I'll write it down. All right, so I'm going to go over here. I'm going to copy my chart. I'm going to paste that into where we would have figure four. Right, and I'm going to paste that. And we see that there is no linear relationship. Let me say it one more time. No linear relationship. So how would we write that down? Okay. We come here and we'll say something to the effect of uh, okay, as we can see in figure four, there is no linear relationship between age and net sales. Right, and then we'd put something like r squared equals 0 0.00011. Okay, all right, now what are you going to do with all of this information? Well, you have your target demographic, you have the net sales by payment and customer type. You can clearly see that there's no 
linear relationship between age and net sales. So you're going to write all of that into an executive summary and you're going to tell me at least four things. One, who is my target demographic? Right? Two, did the coupon work? Right? Three, um, do, do, do. what is the primary payment method? And four, the relationship between age and net sales. Finally, the last thing you're going to do is a recommendation. Right? In other words, how do we sell more stuff to our target demographic. This is where your practical knowledge comes in. Give me three solid recommendations. I don't want to say, well, we're going to increase our presence on social media or whatever. No, what I need is a targeted marketing plan to reach our target demographic, right? So, I'll leave the rest up to you, and if you have any questions, email me.